Freyr. Freyr, Old Norse, Lord, sometimes anglicized as Frey, is a widely attested god associated with sacral kingship, virility and prosperity, with sunshine and fair weather, and pictured as a phallic fertility god in Norse mythology. Freyr is said to bestow peace and pleasure on mortals. Freyr, sometimes referred to as Yngvi Freyr, was especially associated with Sweden and seen as an ancestor of the Swedish royal house. In the Icelandic books The Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, Freyr is presented as one of the Vanir, the son of the sea god Njorthr, as well as the twin brother of the goddess Freya. The gods gave him Alfheimr, the realm of the elves, as a teething present. He rides the shining dwarf maid Borgullinversti and possesses the ship Skithblathnir which always has a favorable breeze and can be folded together and carried in a pouch when it is not being used. He has the servants Skirner, Bygavr, and Bela. The most extensive surviving Freyr myth relates Freyr's falling in love with the female Jotunjurthra. Eventually, she becomes his wife but first Freyr has to give away his sword which fights on its own if wise be he who wields it. Although deprived of this weapon, Freyr defeats the Jotunpeli with an antler. However, lacking his sword, Freyr will be killed by the fire Jotun Surtur during the events of Ragnarok. Like other Germanic deities, veneration of Freyr is revived in the modern period in heathen removement. Written around 1080, one of the oldest written sources on pre Christian Scandinavian religious practices is Adam of Bremen's Hesta Hamaburgensis Ecclesia Pontificum. Adam claimed to have access to first hand accounts on pagan practices in Sweden. He refers to Freyr with the Latinized name Fricko and mentions Tad. An image of him at Skara was destroyed by the Christian missionary, Bishop Egino. His description of the temple at Uppsala gives some details on the god. Later in the account Adam states that when a marriage is performed a libation is made to the image of Fricko. Historians are divided on the reliability of Adam's account. While he is close in time to the events he describes he has a clear agenda to emphasize the role of Archbishopric of Hamburg Bremen in the Christianization of Scandinavia. His time frame for the Christianization of Sweden conflicts with other sources, such as runic inscriptions and archaeological evidence does not confirm the presence of a large temple at Uppsala. On the other hand, the existence of phallus idols was confirmed in 1904 with a find at Rowling in Södermanland, Sweden. When Snorri Sturluson was writing in 13th century Iceland, the indigenous Germanic gods were still remembered although they had not been openly worshipped for more than two centuries. In the Gilfaginning section of his prose Edda, Snorri introduces Freyr as one of the major gods. This description has similarities to the older account by Adam of Bremen but the differences are interesting. Adam assigns control of the weather and produce of the fields to Thor but Snorra says that Freyr rules over those areas. Snorra also omits any explicitly sexual references in Freyr's description. Those discrepancies can be explained in several ways. It is possible that the Norse gods did not have exactly the same roles in Icelandic and Swedish paganism but it must also be remembered that Adam and Snorra were writing with different goals in mind. Either Snorra or Adam may also have had distorted information. The only extended myth related about Freyr in the Prosetta is the story of his marriage. The woman is Jurthra, a beautiful giantess. Freyr immediately falls in love with her and becomes depressed and taciturn. After a period of brooding, he consents to talk to Skirner, his foot page. He tells Skirner that he has fallen in love with a beautiful woman and thinks he will die if he cannot have her. He asks Skirner to go and woo her for him. The loss of Freyr's sword has consequences. According to the Prosetta, Freyr had to fight Pelly without his sword and slew him with an antler dot but the result at Ragnarok, the end of the world, will be much more serious. Freyr is fated to fight the fire giant Surtur and since he does not have his sword will be defeated. Even after the loss of his weapon Freyr still has two magical artifacts, both of them dwarf made. One is the ship Skithblathnir, which will have favoring breeze wherever its owner wants to go and can also be folded together like a napkin and carried in a pouch. The other is the board Gullen Bursty whose main glows to illuminate the way for his owner. No myths involving Skithblathnir have come down to us but Snorri relates that Freyr rode to Baldur's funeral in a wagon pulled by Gullen Bursty. Freyr is referred to several times in skaldic poetry. In Hastrapa, partially preserved in the Prose Edda, he is said to ride aboard to Baldur's funeral. In a poem by Aedil Scala Creamson, Freyr is called upon along with Njorthur to drive Eric Blood Axe from Norway. The same skald mentions in Arind Janarkvitha that his friend has been blessed by the two gods. In Nafnathu Freyr is said to ride the horse Blathu Gofi, Bloody Hoof. Freyr is mentioned in several of the poems in the Poetic Edda. 
the information there is largely consistent with that of the prosata while each collection is some details not found in the other. Volaspa, the best known of the Attic poems, describes the final confrontation between Frere and Surtur during Ragnarok. Some scholars have preferred a slightly different translation, in which the sun shines from the sword of the gods. The idea is that the sword which Surtur slays Frere with is the sword of the gods which Frere had earlier bargained away for Jurathra. This would add a further layer of tragedy to the myth. Sigurdr Nordal argued for this view, but the possibility represented by Ursula Drong's translation above is equally possible. Grimnismal, a poem which largely consists of miscellaneous information about the gods, mentions Freyr's abode. A tooth gift was a gift given to an infant on the cutting of the first tooth. Since Alfheimer or Alfheimer means world of Alfar, elves. The fact that Freyr should down it is one of the indications of a connection between the Vanar and the obscure Alfar. Grim Nismal also mentions that the sons of Ivaldi made Skithblatner or Freyr and that it is the best of ships. In the poem Lokasena, Loki accuses the gods of various misdeeds. He criticizes the Vanir for incest, saying that Njorthur had Freyr with his sister. He also states that the gods discovered Freyr and Freya having sex together. The god here speaks up in Freyr's defense. Lokasena also mentions that Freyr has servants called Bygavar and Bela. They seem to have been associated with the making of bread. The courtship of Freyr and Jurthra is dealt with extensively in the poem Skurnismal. Freyr is depressed after seeing Jurthra. Jurthra and Skadi ask Skurner to go and talk with him. Freyr reveals the cause of his grief and asks Skurner to go to Jotunheimer to woo Jurthra for him. Freyr gives Skurner a steed and his magical sword for the journey. When Skirner finds Jurthra he starts by offering her treasures if she will marry Freyr. When she declines he gets her consent by threatening her with destructive magic. Snorra Sturluson starts his epic history of the kings of Norway with Inglinga Saga, a humorized account of the Norse gods. Here Odin and the Esser are men from Asia who gain power through their prowess in war and Odin's skills. But when Odin attacks the Vanir he bites off more than he can chew in pieces negotiated after the destructive and indecisive Esser Vanir war. Hostages are exchanged to seal the peace deal and the Vanir send Freyr and Jorthur to live with the Esser. At this point the saga, like Lokasena, mentions that incest was practiced among the Vanir. Odin makes Jorthur and Freyr priests of sacrifices and they become influential leaders. Odin goes on to conquer the north and settles in Sweden where he rules as king, collects taxes and maintains sacrifices. After Odin's death, Jorthur takes the throne. During his rule there is peace and good harvest and the Swedes come to believe that Njorthur controls these things. Eventually Njorthur falls ill and dies. Freyr had a son named Fjallner, who succeeds him as king and rules during the continuing period of peace and good seasons. Fjallner's descendants are enumerated in Glengada which describes the mythological kings of Sweden. The 14th century Icelandic Hogmander Thatterditz contains a tradition of how Freyr was transported in a wagon and administered by a priestess, in Sweden. Freyr's role as a fertility god needed a female counterpart in a divine couple, McKinnell's translation 1987. In this short story, a man named Gunnar was suspected of manslaughter and escaped to Sweden, where Gunnar became acquainted with this young priestess. He helped her drive Freyr's wagon with a god effigy in it, but the god did not appreciate Gunnar and so attacked him and would have killed Gunnar if he hadn't promised himself to return to the Christian faith if he would make it back to Norway. When Gunnar had promised this, a demon jumped out of the god effigy and so Freyr was nothing but a piece of wood. Gunnar destroyed the wooden idol and dressed himself as Freyr, then Gunnar and the priestess traveled across Sweden where people were happy to see the god visiting them. After a while he made the priestess pregnant, but this was seen by the Swedes as confirmation that Freyr was truly a fertility god and not a scam. Finally, Gunnar had to flee back to Norway with his young bride and had her baptized at the court of Olaf Tregvason. Worship of Freyr is alluded to in several Icelanders' sagas. The protagonist of Vrthgal's saga is a priest of Freyr. He dedicates a horse to the god and kills a man for riding it, setting in motion a chain of fateful events. In Gisla saga a chieftain named Thorgrim of Freyskothi is an ardent worshipper of Freyr. When he dies he is buried in a house. Hallfrathar saga, Vigiklum saga and Vatnstola saga also mention Freyr. Other Icelandic sources referring to Freyr include Eilendingabok, Landnamabok, and Ervarar Saga. Eilendingabok, written around 1125, is the oldest Icelandic source to mention Freyr, including him in a genealogy of Swedish kings. Landnamabok includes a heathen oath to be sworn at an assembly where Freyr, Njorthr, and the Almighty Ass are invoked.
Evrar Saga mentions a Yuletide sacrifice of a boar to Freyr. The 12th century Danish Hesta Danorum describes Freyr, under the name Fro, as the viceroy of the gods. That Freyr had a cult at Uppsala is well confirmed from other sources. The reference to the change in sacrificial ritual may also reflect some historical memory. There is archaeological evidence for an increase in human sacrifices in the late Viking Age, though among the Norse gods, human sacrifice is most often linked to Odin. Another reference to Fro and sacrifices is found earlier in the work, where the beginning of an annual blot to him is related. King Hadingus is cursed after killing a divine being and atones for his crime with a sacrifice. The sacrifice of dark-colored victims to Freyr has a parallel in ancient Greek religion where the thonic fertility deities preferred dark-colored victims to white ones. In Book 9, Saxo identifies Fro as the king of Sweden, Rex Suidii. The reference to public prostitution may be a memory of fertility cult practices. Such a memory may also be the source of a description in Book 6 of the stay of Star Catharis, a follower of Odin, in Sweden. A strophe of the Anglo-Saxon rune poem, circa 1100, records that This may refer to the origins of the worship of Ingwi in the tribal areas that Tacitus mentions in his Germania as being populated by the Ingwinic tribes. A later Danish chronicler lists Ingwi was one of three brothers that the Danish tribes descended from. The strophe also states that then he, Ingwi, went back over the waves his wagon behind him which could connect Ingwi to earlier conceptions of the wagon processions of Nerthus and the later Scandinavian conceptions of Freyr's wagon journeys. Ingwi is mentioned also in some later Anglo-Saxon literature under varying forms of his name, such as for what doth Ingeld have to do with Christ and the variants used in Beowulf to designate the kings as leader of the friends of Ing. The compound Ingwi Freya, Oi, and Ingwi Freyr, An likely refer to the connection between the god and the Germanic king's role as priests during the sacrifices in the pagan period, as Freya and Freyr are titles meaning lord. The Swedish royal dynasty was known as Thinglings from their descent from Yngvi Freyr. This is supported by Tacitus, who wrote about the Germans, in their ancient songs, their only way of remembering or recording the past they celebrate an earthborn god to Isco, and his son Manus, as the origin of Theorus, as their founders. To Manus they assigned three sons from whose names, they say, the coast tribes are called Ingavones, those of the interior, Hermanones, all the rest, Istavones. In 1904, a Viking Age statuette identified as a depiction of Freyr was discovered on the farm Rowling in Lunda, Södermanland Parish in the province of Södermanland, Sweden. The depiction features a cross-legged seated, bearded male with an erect penis. He is wearing a pointed cap and stroking his triangular beard. The statue is 9 cm tall and is displayed at the Swedish Museum of National Antiquities. A part of the Swedish Skog tapestry depicts three figures that has been interpreted as allusions to Odin, Thor, and Freyr, but also as the three Scandinavian holy kings Knut, Eric, and Olaf. The figures coincide with 11th century descriptions of statue arrangements recorded by Adam of Bremen at the temple at Uppsala in written accounts of the gods during the late Viking Age. The tapestry is originally from House England, Sweden but is now housed at the Swedish Museum of National Antiquities. Small pieces of gold foil featuring engravings dating from the migration period into the early Viking Age, known as Golgubber, have been discovered in various locations in Scandinavia at one site almost 2,500. The foil pieces have been found largely on the sites of buildings, only rarely engraves. The figures are sometimes single, occasionally an animal, sometimes a man and a woman with a leafy bow between them, facing or embracing one another. The human figures are almost always clothed and are sometimes depicted with their knees bent. Scholar Hilda Ellis Davidson says that it has been suggested that the figures are taking part in a dance and that they may have been connected with weddings, as well as linked to the Vanir group of gods, representing the notion of a divine marriage, such as in the poetic Edda poem Skernismal, the coming together of Jurthur and Freyr. Norway Sweden Denmark Netherlands Belgium Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.